Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Fine, and I'm my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, talk about uh, not today's guest, but more importantly, what we're going to be discussing today? Well, I thought I'd put you on the spot. That's always good fun for me. I like to see you squirm. And uh, I thought, what would be difficult for Sean to answer? I'm just kidding. It wasn't quite that bad. We're coming up to nearly end of year. It feels really strange to say that. It feels like it's really crept up on us. At the time of recording, we're late October, and I just think, where did this year go? Um, so a couple months left, maybe six weeks, if you count Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I've been I've been negotiating a couple of really big contracts for our team of late, and I really felt the like tension in the reps to get the deal done yep. before the end of the year. I, I could noticeably feel it, um, the way that they were closing the way that they were negotiating i felt it and in some ways it works for me in other ways it's a little bit off-putting but that's part of life so i thought let's flip it on its head what can we do as salespeople if we need to close our deals before end of year without giving off too much of that feeling but obviously we've still got to get the job done so i mean i have a, I have a few little, little tips and tricks that i've used in the past um one thing i've done that typically works is uh get a senior person involved uh so what i do is um, on an email, um, you know, if it's if I'm an account executive, then get your CRO, get your sales manager, get them CC'd on it. Um, it just makes that prospect feel like, yeah, I'm very serious. I want you to close before the end of the year. And and sometimes you might be able to give a little bit of a discount. I know people hate giving discounts, but you know, sometimes to give if you're that close to hitting your quota for that quarter. Um, it might be good to get someone senior involved, but I'll uh, I'll pass one over to you, Ollie, because I have I have a bunch of them actually. Okay, um, so I like to get the teammate involved. Uh, sales is a team sport. We don't ever feel like it is. We think it's up to me and myself only. It's not, um, and particularly if it's a bigger deal, I like that one a lot. You want to get like the CEO to CEO if that's possible. If you work for like a two thousand person company, that might not be available to you, but at least somebody senior who can kind of be on the exec to exec level rather than. It could feel like, uh, you know, I'm an SDR or I'm a new AE and I'm talking to this like big shot exec. It, it feels funny. So I like that one. Um, I think ne negotiating the terms, it doesn't have to mean discount. It can mean things like um, we want different payment terms. So that was one that I've asked for recently. Yep. Last year, we paid one of our very big expenses up front. Um, for anybody who runs cash flow or deals with the finances of your business, you know that that's probably not the way you want to do it. You want to do it in, in quarterly or at least biannually if you can. So I was able to negotiate that and they were happy to say, yeah, that's great. We can do that if you're able to sign it by end of next week, which I was. So the give get trade off there, I don't think we use that well enough, but but that's that's my one. But if you've got a few more, you go for it. So, you know, one thing that you know I know um, our team will be doing uh, in house this this coming quarter is if for any reason inflation's coming in and people are starting to raise prices, if you're about to raise prices, um, I always mention, hey, you want to sign up in 2022 because I will tell you, prices will be in increasing in 2023. And you actually do increase prices. A lot of software companies now are increased prices just because the cost of employees are more, fixed costs are more, um, everything's going up in price. So you might want to leverage that. And, and if you are planning on actually raising your price, um, I would definitely um, bring that up on conversation. And I'll, I'll just go one more even deeper. Um, sometimes it's not even about going to new prospects to try and sell a new tool. I would go to your existing prospects and try and upsell them on other things that you currently have. So we do that in December where we do a, kind of like an advent calendar where we actually give everything's for our existing clients, different things you can upsell. Some might be discounted, some might be um, just different strategy inside it. But the whole point is to try and get them to add more seats, you know, add different paid features we have, go from the middle tier to the higher tier, add their team on, go on to an agency model, different things you can do. But those are some other ones that we've definitely used in the past and we're going to be using in the upcoming months. I'm sure you've made a couple of mistakes doing this in the past, particularly when it was just you selling and, and that kind of stuff. Where have you like? Where can you call yourself out for having sounded like you got that commission breath because it's end of quarter or it's end of month or end of year, whatever it is? Where, where have you yourself gone wrong with that? Because I've definitely done it. I think we all have. But where have you done it? With gone wrong with what? Sorry. 
Like, where, what have you done that's a telltale sign of desperation? I've got to, you know, get it done this month. Did you, have you ever just dropped the price down for the sake of getting it done when you probably could have got away with it not doing that? Do you want to know one of my my tactics? And I'm a very honest person. Um, If I'm at the end of the year and I feel somebody's going to close early in January, I will actually get on the phone with them and personally ask them if they can close in December and just say, hey, listen, I get paid commission. Um, you know, I'm this close to hitting my end of the year. If there's anything, you know, you can do to help me get there. And if you have that relationship with people, people are going to, because remember, people also have to use their budget up. So sometimes they have a budget that says, okay, we have to use this sort of marketing budget by the end of the year, because 2023, we have a brand new budget. So there's different things you can do, but I always say, you know, it's the same thing when I, when I tell people when they're cold calling, don't go on. And my first thing when somebody cold calls me, I always say to them, is this a cold call? And well, uh, is it, if it, it, just say yes, if it is. So it's the same thing as me calling you and saying, oh, like, hey, listen, I am $5,000 away. I need to appeal for $5,000. That's your deal. I hit my year. I hit my quarter. What can you do to help me out? I'll owe you a favor. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. And people are more than willing to help people out. Yeah, I feel like that's massively under um, underused. I know you're a salesperson. You're trying to get me to sign a deal. Go figure you're going to get commission for it. So yeah, I, I think as long as you're able to speak on that human level, or sometimes it's very, very corporate and you don't quite get that report going, but that, that's a good one. Um, I was going to ask you a question. It's just completely slipped my mind. Um, that's a shame. So I, I have one other one that I, that I, I know, like in, instead of we're talking about discounts and, and, you know, listen, there's a lot of these so-called sales influencers, never discount, never discount. Well, they've never owned a business. Okay. So they, they don't know that sometimes you got to hit quota. You got to hit numbers. You want to increase your growth. So I, I never agree with people to say never discount. Don't get me wrong. It should be your first option. But another way you can do it at the end of the year is instead of discounting, give them features that might be in a higher tier in that tier to have them incentivize them to close within the, the, before the end of the quarter. So you're not increasing the price and you're giving some more features, but you're still getting the price you want. So that's another option. Um, really you can use at the end of the year um, that we've, we've strategically used sometimes, but um, you know, as I said, there's, there's so many different things you can do um, besides just, uh, you know, dropping your pants. So where is the line on that? Because I agree with that a lot. I think most of the time, like a lot of your customers, they don't have the exact same cookie cutter situation. Like hopefully you can get somewhat close to that, but that's just not really how life works. If I'm buying something, it's definitely the same reasons, but it's it's different context to 20 other buyers in a row. It's never the same one. So you, I think you need to do that. But where's the line? Because if you do that too much, you're creating chaos for the like development team, the success team. Like many companies, they try and say it's plan one, two, or three, and we deliver A, B, and C. That's that's repeatable. I know how to deliver that. We can scale it. We can get better at it. And that's a brilliant thing for a business. Yep. But doesn't always work that nicely and easily with the customer. So where is the line for that? It can get a bit messy. Yeah. So for me, what I do is I, I will only offer additional features that I know I personally can go into the admin portal and click enable or disable. If it's something that's going to, you know, it's something that's gonna, that, that get my developers involved, I probably will not do it. But if it's something that is very easily accessible for me, I can just literally go in, click a button and give it to them and I can close the deal. Yeah, I'll do it that way. Okay. So bringing it back to the end of year type of cycle, whether, whether fiscal or just calendar year, how early would you be thinking about and starting to talk to prospects about this is end of year? Would you be doing it in the last month because it's month? Or would you be doing it kind of mid-November, something like that, where you're within sight, but you're not like October 1st. It, it's the start of Q4. It's not end of year yet. So where, where's kind of the line on what's too early and what's not? It, it all depends on your sales cycle. Um, however, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. What I used to do early on in auto close in our first year, I used to almost on every call to try and close deals. I used to tell them January is my end of year. February is my end of year. March is my end of year. Just for that first year to try and really drive as many sales as I can. Because we're just in growth mode. So um, I don't think it's, you know, a time. But if, you know, for example, we're in October now. Um, my, you know, November's coming. December's coming. I would probably say on your conversations now, if you have a you know anywhere between a one week to a three month sales cycle, 
I would start doing it now saying, hey, you know, no pressure, but we do, we are raising pricing in, in January. You might want to make the decision before December. And then they might say, oh, well, this is a 2023 budget. Or they might say, yeah, no, the plan is this. We want this launched by 2000. Then you kind of get more information, make those notes, find out that information, put that into your CRM, and then know that, okay, I'm going to keep hounding this person all the way until the end of the year because they've told me they have to purchase this this year if if because they have the budget this year. They don't have the budget for next year. So you can kind of find out more information by having more of those discussions with those prospects. Can you only do that with existing pipeline to close it? Or can you do that in your discovery with new pipeline and kind of make that overtly clear if it looks like they're going to go down the funnel like have the demo maybe buy at some point or, or is it both? See, I wouldn't do it before the demo. I would do it during and after the demo. Because yeah. in the discovery call, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're already talking about me closing. You haven't even showed me your product yet. But after you show the product, if you can get that sense, I mean, anytime I've ever been on a demo, you know, you know, or, or on a call, like, you know, just 20 minutes ago, I'm teaching now one of my reps, I'm on their call because they just became an AE. And I can get the kind of the feeling that the prospect's not really engaged, not really interested. You know, the, the account executive's probably wasting a little bit of time, but he's getting his practice. You'll know when you have those demos, is that person interested? Is that person not interested? And then you'll get a feel. When I have those people that are interested, I say like, in my head, it's like, okay, that person's interested. I'm going to be a pit bull on this call. I'm going to try whatever I can before this end of this call to get something secured and try and close them. So you get those feelings, but you know, having those conversations earlier than later always helps as well. I always did that when, when I was selling. I don't do as much as I would like to now, but if um if they were price being asked early on isn't necessarily an indication of buying but if, if you get the f sense that it is just your your experience of selling and if you know some of the other questions they're asking around you can tell if somebody's a bit of a passive buyer versus if they're actually active and they've got a quick cycle that they want to go through so if you're getting that early on that's a like golden ticket you tell them about it then because they're there and they're ready to do it don't wait till like Okay, I'm ready. Give me the contract. And then you say, yeah, if you do it this week, you've kind of waited too long. You've yeah. lost the sense to create the urgency. And one of the one of the show one of the tells I find is when you're doing a demo, say your demo's a half an hour and you're 15 minutes in and the prospect's already like, so what's the price? You yeah. already have them locked in. Like you're 15 minutes in. You haven't even showed them the other 15 minutes. They're locked in. You want to make sure that you're putting that, hey, I'll give you the price, but FYI. This is only, you know, this is only good for 30 days because we are raising our pricing in January. So we need to close it before the, the end of the year. And I said, be very upfront, but you usually, if you're a good salesperson, you get those hunches that are like, okay, I have this person ready to go. Or some of you are like, okay, this person's wasting my time. All right. 13 minutes. That was a quick podcast. Any no-nos, any do not do's or are there... Did we kind of go through all of it? I would just say the one do not do is do not stop selling because it's the end of the year. Um, if you're not going to make that sale in December, that's still worth a call because you just fill your pipeline for January, February, March. Uh, so the one thing I would say, don't do is, you know, don't say, oh, it's the holiday season. People are in the, people are in the office. People are working. So, um, that's my, that's my little words of advice. What about you, Ollie? Uh, and don't leave your Q1 empty because you've tried to stuff everything into Q4. Like that's, like you said, it's, it's not always, always be closing is good. Obviously, always be prospecting for the next quarter too. A lot of reps that I know, especially if the deal cycle is more than two months, give or take, you have to be almost like a quarter ahead. So if you have a bad Q3, uh, Q3 prospecting wise, you're going to have a tough Q4 closing wise. So, you know, always keeping both on top. I thought like everyone thinks end of year or end of quarter, I've got to close and we stop prospecting. We just start getting a bit hung up on the, on the 10, 15 people that we got to close, which um, can go against us. Yeah. Well, perfect. I think this was a great conversation. This would be very valuable for the audience. I want to thank everybody that's listening here today. And if you didn't forget, give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from, only so we can continue to do these episodes, continue to provide you value. So once again, thank you and, uh, and look forward to our next episode. Thanks, Ollie.